So this is actually the device that we printed. And what it does is our helicopter pilots and our helicopter nursing crew that goes out in the fields and picks up uh, sick patients who need to come to the hospital immediately. We don't know their background. They don't have time to be tested. And so we have to assume that they're all COVID positive. And so in, that case, in those cases, the crew was wearing an N95 mask and then over that they have their helmet and the helmets have a built-in microphone so that they can connect to the uh, wired communication of the helicopter and they can communicate and they can give report from the nursing side to the nurses in the ER that will be receiving the incoming uh, uh, flight lifted patient. So as they were doing that, the N95s were getting destroyed in that humid condition pretty quickly. The microphones had to be right up against their mouth in order for good communications. And so part of the problem with that is the masks that they had, the attachable filters, which are called P100 filters instead of N95 filters, uh, were of a different manufacturer than the masks that they, they had. And they were all on back order for probably two months, all of July and all of August. And so the one of the directors of the flight crew found this little adapter online we tweaked it slightly uh, and sort of optimized it for our printer. And then within a week had all 30 flight crew up and running back with their helmets, with this adapter, which then allowed the P100 filters that they were able to source to fit with their personal customized masks that had the microphone built into it. So they didn't have to sort of smash an extra 95 in between their mask and their helmet as they were flying all day. Pre-COVID days, I had an office in Chapel Hill, about 30 minutes away, and I had 3D printers set up there. And COVID hit, so maybe the solution is to move the entire lab to my house and turn the sort of spare bedroom into uh, the prototyping and development suite. I started hearing about the PPE shortage at Sever Dawn. People who needed masks, people who needed face shields, all, those, all the things that were missing that were getting in the way of our first responders to help. And they we're putting themselves at risk. It was, it was scary. And I, I had a friend who's a nurse, and she was telling me how they have one N95 mask that they, get, they were getting assigned per, like, every two weeks or something. They had to wear that for two weeks straight. And I was like, man, we got to work on something. we got to figure something out. And there was a ton of work being done online. There was all these different groups who were iterating and making design after design after design. And one of the challenges that I was running into is like there was nothing really finished. Because, you know, when you finish a design, you got to hand the pile of documentation, assembly instructions, quality control, testing, all of this over to people to go manufacture it. And so I'm good at that. So we created this document. I did a bunch of testing on my 3D printer, all the different mask designs, made a few uh, uh, alterations to the most popular design, which is called the Montana mask. So I, I kind of came back from my spring break and of course the campus is all shut down. So I brought the race 3D ones home. Around that time, we also were approved to buy, to buy two of the E2s. So then I, I expanded my home lab, if you will, from three up to five printers. The primary reason that I brought the machines home is because we still had classes going on. I brought home the three machines with the intention of just um, having students send me their designs. I would print them at home. I also then became a delivery person. The students would send me their, their, their design, I would print them and I would deliver it to their house. We were really excited and happy to be using the Raise Cloud over starting with the summer class. And, and we, we implemented that in June as a way for students at home to be doing their own slicing and then sending those jobs to the raise cloud. We wanted the students to get that experience, but when it's totally virtual, right, how, how do they do that? Um, and the solution we found that worked really well was to have students run the slicing on their own copy of Idea Maker, send those jobs to the raise cloud, that way we could keep track of all the pending jobs. So the raise cloud was really an excellent way for, for me to look at their slicing result. So I can give them that feedback really easily through the raise cloud. So essentially they provided this STL and say, we needed as many of these as possible and we're gonna distribute them within the Milwaukee area. So very quickly, um, you know, and that, that, that request basically came through the school and the school contacted me and said, hey, you have these machines, do you wanna do this? And I said, uh, yes, I do. 
one of my first steps was to try to get a hold of as much as much PETG plastic as I could. Over the course of into April and then through May, the Montana mask variant, I produced 339 of those. We have been doing a combination of the, um, the face shield, just the, the head part, um, and then the ear guards on the back. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am also, at the same time, the faculty sponsor for something called Chocolate Club. They were the ones who reached out to me and, and, and they said, hey, you know, we want to do care packages for the hospital. They're thinking about not using the machines. I just happen to be the sponsors. And I said, look, you guys, we have this opportunity. Uh, and I've got these new machines that I want to sort of learn and play with. So, so let's, you know, start making something. This was one we found on Thingiverse. People really liked it. And so they made some versions of it where they, they changed the, the sizes and they changed the image in the middle. Um, but that was a really popular project for that group. Uh, you know, the, the visors were sort of good and, and, and practical and functional, but they definitely didn't capture the students' like excitement and imaginations in the same way. So we sort of ran with it. We ended up sending 700 to the hospital uh, by the time we broke for summer. And so like the last day we finally sort of did a last shipment and we boxed it all up and we sent it over. And at this point we're using the, the smaller design. We can get about 120 in 13 hours, so I'll run it overnight. And then I said in the morning when I arrived, uh, we just sent out a week's worth. So maybe 700 ish for the first set of care packages. And then the next set's coming out next week. The kind of stuff that we're producing uh, and the way that it's being sent as sort of part of a care package with this sort of like personalized, uh, you know, it's being painted, it has these personalized messages on it. Um, and so there's this combination of what is this being used for and you know, uh, is, the, is the primary gift that's being given, the, the functionality of it, which is sort of this important piece, or is it sort of this, the emotional significance? And I, I think for my students, they see themselves as giving something that's really meant to sort of be this, this emotional experience, right? Where like, you have this personally designed thing with this message that's just for you, that was painted by hand by somebody who, you know, wants to encourage you. And so even if they've got you know, the M95 math, um, you know, my students are more enthusiastic about the ear guard with the message that's been painted. Uh, and so, so in a lot of ways, it, it has, it's not something that's going to change depending on supply level. You know, if we were trying to produce something that was just like turning out something as fast as possible because it's going to be functional and we're filling in a gap because the supply isn't there, um, then I can totally understand why you would be tapering off but we're definitely going the other way. We're ramping up production because the students understand the, the volume that we're working at. And, and they've seen now with just giving it to one hospital, you know, we got like a bunch of thank you notes and people saying, you know, nice things. Um, it's, it's the messaging, right? It's, it's the like, the, the expression of, of, we care about you, you know, we're, we're here to encourage you, that kind of thing. All, diff all supply chains are slowing down and becoming more difficult. So it's not just the high demand things like PPE. Maybe something really simple that facilities needs and can't get um, because all of supply chain across the country or even internationally has been reduced. And so I think being available and accessible to them is one of my big priorities. I actually started our 3D print lab here about a year ago. And my first printer was a raised 3D printer. The entire goal at that time was to do medical education simulation and to recreate patient anatomy from CT and MRI scans, mostly for our resident and medical student education. We're also morphing into helping our clinicians, our surgeons, and our physicians uh, with those patient scans, uh, being able to visualize those, touch and feel the models, and then from there, help them in the OR, uh, both to do complex orthopedic surgeries and vascular surgeries, as well as explain to the patients what's going on. The lab uh, hosted some classes where, you know, the students would sign up for the class and then they would come in and the class would meet in the lab. With my training and my guidance and generally using it correctly, they have the ability to, you know, kind of print, print essentially whatever they want. I use printing in, in all three of my main classes. And then once we get the Makerspace class, then, you know, we'll obviously be using it in the fourth. I'm currently using it. I'm sort of working towards building up capacity at our site so that we can work at a, at a sort of higher volume. Application for printing varies depending on which unit we're working in. 
Uh, and so typically what we have are a couple projects that we have staggered across the classes uh, that students have either the option to print or they have to do some 3D modeling and then the best ones get to print it. Um, uh, but we, you know, we stagger those across the classes to make sure that we're not all printing at the same time. Um, moving our technology forward and increasing our lab's turnaround time, ability to take a patient scan or request from a referring physician and get that out back into their hands so that they can meaningfully use it both with the patient and with their surgical or preoperative planning for that case in a time frame that makes sense and is feasible for them. I, I got COVID. It was, uh, I don't recommend it. <laughs> I think everybody should stay socially distanced and wearing masks. In working with doctors and nurses, you get to hear what's on the front lines and, and it was an absolute pleasure to ensure the maker community knew that this was important and it was worth fighting for. Uh, so I had COVID myself and it's kind of scary. I ended up having to go to the emergency room. It was nice to, to be telling the story through my work that it's something we should take seriously. And if you can't, if you don't have a mask, we can make you one because we believe that wearing masks is important. I think a lot of people were swayed by how many of us were working on mask related projects. Like we wanted people to be safe. So I, I think on a personal note, contributing in that way, putting in an effort to ensure that we had masks to begin with, I think is the first step to making sure that people wear masks or see the importance of wearing masks. And so and that's sort of my message. You know, I'm, not, I'm not working on this anymore. The mask shortage is slowly working itself out and the documentation to make your own mask is there. So I'm, I just hope that we were able to create momentum to show people how important it is to wear a mask so that you don't end up in the emergency room like I did. You don't wind up very sick like some other people have and dying. It's just awful. Mm -hmm.